What's up, everyone? Welcome to Third Street Reactions. I'm James. I'm Shane. Zach. We're here today with Jupiter's Legacy, Episode 3. Yes. So what happened last episode, guys? Uh, quite a bit. We saw uh, Shell. Uh, Shep. Sheldon. Is it Sheldon? Why don't you get a shepherd? For the Mass Effect. Call to us. Shell. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Go ahead. No, um, we saw him. You know, he's, he's trying his best. Um, but you know what? He's being a little hard on his kids. Yeah. Especially maybe his daughter. Yeah. Um, I think he's got good intentions, but he needs to have the wisdom to see when he needs to be the superior, when he needs to be the dad. But there's nothing more important to him right now than the ideal. Um, Absolutely. The um, code. And also, I think we talked about last time, I'm really interested in the past stuff. Yeah, me, me too. too. Yeah, I, I think love it. The present stuff's cool, but the past stuff I'm really interested in. Mm -hmm. I'm not very interested in the present stuff at all. Yeah. I'm more interested in the past. Yeah, I am a little bit. Uh, Sheldon and his son had a big episode. They had a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. Sheldon was giving his son a hard time still about taking fake black star's life yeah um but there's a cultural shift you know there's people that are in the family that think they need to take a more hard line stance with the villains mm -hmm. there's a cultural shift in the community because they took some kind of poll where they said like 80 percent of the community supported the execution of black star so uh there's a lot of shit going down so yeah you know? it's, it's kind of like just standing against the times yeah and the the times are telling them you need to fucking wipe these assholes out. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of reper, uh, repercussions. A lot of uh, the villains they said repeatedly in the episode, even though we didn't really see it, where villains are kind of committing a lot more crimes. Yep. Like repercussions, I guess, for Black Star's death. Mm -hmm. Yeah, emotional moment uh, where you know Sheldon was ripping his son out at the farm. And his son told him, I choose you, Dad. I felt like that was a pretty emotional yeah, moment. Yeah, I thought, I thought so, too. But yeah. it didn't have any effect on his dad at all. His dad just like, you know, hard line, you know, we got to do this. We got to stick to our values. We got to stick to our family code. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. At the press conference when he came out with that shit, though, mm -hmm. they never had good results. Nope. It didn't. I don't expect the, those people to understand. That didn't bother me. But the stuff with his son and his daughter... Well, yeah. if you look at it from the point of view of right now mm -hmm. in our culture, we a lot of people protest the government and the shit it does. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So you say, well, those people I don't really see. They think they don't understand. It's like we are those fucking people. One last thing: uh, when they when they flash back, Grace Kennedy uh, is one that. Oh, she's a bitch. Yeah. Reporter. Yeah, the reporter. Oh. <laughs> Brothers is a story. It wasn't going like, ooh. Well, <laughs> See, when you did me the other day, my one. Well, I wasn't tickled. Yeah. I you were. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Grace Kennedy uh, published that story about Sheldon and the other guy's dad. Yeah, it showed him on the pavement. Yeah, stealing Paint money. The yeah, that that's brutal. ridiculous. That was that brutal. Was bad. Boy, grabs, uh, grabs the eye. Grabs gets the eye. Grabbed. They sold a I'll lot of papers. Sales. Hook can never be a newspaper editor. <laughs> no, no. good for them. Yeah, <laughs> but they uh, they sold a lot of newspapers that day. I guarantee yeah. it. But uh, but you guys said Grace ended up being fucking Sheldon's wife, right? Yeah, you can tell. Same actress. Yeah, same actress. So that was we'll find out more about that. But the last thing is uh, Zach, you were saying Sheldon had a dream at the end of the episode. Mm. Yeah, he had a dream at the end of the episode after um, he had the nosebleed and shit at his dad's funeral. Mm -hmm. He yeah. passes out, and he has a dream that his dad's talking to him. And it tells him, find the boat, gather your team or something like that, or your crew, find the island, save America. Uh, save America. And save America. America. And, America. And, America. And, and when he wakes up, he sees his dad's ghost. Presumably hmm. his dad's ghost standing in the back. Like, you just see him in the foreshore. The, I don't even remember that. But really, one see of like a, fucking a, green guys from Captain Marvel fucking everything up. You see like his bloody <laughs> head and his body standing Oh, there. I can do kind of remember that. Yeah, wow. So uh, that's all there is to say about it, and we should keep Let's go. If you're pulling a Phil Collins, I swear. Phil Collins? Going solo, ditching us like you left Genesis. <laughs> anybody. Who's Genesis? Here we go. Back of the van. Go to the burn, my brother. Drop whatever the hell that is. Sit place. Ah, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell! Back of the van. Look how cool that is. That is cool. Way God intended, sir. Are you being cheeky, Cuthbert? Was that cheek? All oh, tongue and lips, I assure you, sir. We need a bucket. Send over the papers. Cheeky one. <laughs> he reminds me of Mr. Grady from The Shining. Ninety-nine eggs, 
boil to varying degrees exactly as you'd like them. Which will it be today, sir? Uh. Let's go with the number 72. Excellent choice, sir. Huh. What a life. Just boil me some eggs. Make them George. Because it is all about the attitude. Chum, chin up, eyes forward. Paint the clouds with sunshine. Soka. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We had a deal, you goddamn Nazi. All are equal in my eyes, if they can pay. I'll get you your money. That is a handsome man. Well, you know, you gotta be careful with that. Folks will get the wrong notion. Come on, pal. They want to see. And just like this. The devil is free. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Did you hear what they did to Stuart? Yeah, I heard. They zapped his dick off, like clean off. And that was just for looking at him sideways. Stuart's an asshole. <laughs> We're all assholes, mate. Simple grab and go. We're in. We're out. They always say. <laughs> Jesus! I don't want to ever be driving and see people change any of that idea. No. They're determined. The T1 thousand. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Fucking back to the future. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Because we are home. <laughs> Fuck. What the fuck? What are you doing? It's the utopia, the kid! He does not give a fuck about you guys, trust me. But you're making her give a fuck about you guys. <laughs> Holy hell. She sobered up quick. Yeah. People start trying to kill you after they fucking wreck into you. I mean, <laughs> you know something about that, don't I you? I do. <laughs> no longer drunk. Oh, it was a fun weekend. Yeah, I feel like that guy could never actually be caught. Well, yeah, maybe not. It's interesting because he has no superhero powers. His powers in that stick. Take the stick. He's in trouble. What can you get from that? You have to assume that you put it together properly, right? It would be difficult. He's got several different drawings there, pieces of them he's yeah. taken. So he's probably trying to make sense of all the drawings. He's, he's probably trying to draw the same drawing over and over again. This is what happens to a fellow with you on his lap, Hop on. Mm -hmm. Easy there, pal. That's the future Mrs. Sampson you're making eyes at. Hey, can you blame me? Hey, whatever time. Beyond the grave, Sheldon. I just closed my eyes and kept repeating over and over and over what you said. Life happened, and then it stopped. And when I opened my eyes back up, it's like, if you hadn't dropped by, who knows? I'd have, I'd have found my own roof to jump off of. I'll never say that. Damn. About these shapes, something that, uh, something I, I couldn't stop thinking about. You know, it was like a, like a 
puzzle that needed to be solved. You're not. You're triggering him again. I know. It's a. It's a memory. Fragment. Something you forgot. No, I've never seen this before. Not so. Damn it, Georgie. Georgie, motherfucker. Good job, George. She takes off because of it, you know? Yeah, I was thinking. Shark infested waters. Damn. Jesus. You see, common misconception. It doesn't matter who's holding this. It only listens to me. Well, just holy right. shit. Big man's heart. Jesus. See, big man. But the world is changing. Oh my god. So I guess I'm gonna have. I took the liberty of averaging all of your selections over the last year and arrived at the estimation number 58 would be most appropriate this morning, sir. <laughs> Sky Fox. Yeah, because remember earlier in the episode they were talking about with him on the radio. He said, hey, they're talking about your pops on the radio. Mm, yeah. so. Guys, that was our reaction to this episode. Now we're going to break it down. Break so, it down. Yeah, so, yeah, we got new. I mean, basically, this shit's to focus away from the family. I almost said on the man's family. From the family yeah. to uh, George's son and his friends and the bad guys. George's yeah. son, Hutch. George just seems kind of like a kid over his head, though. Yeah, you know I mean, he did George it first. Or yeah. Hutch. 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 Sorry, Hutch. Yeah, yeah, Hutch. Yeah, he seemed like he was over his head for sure. In the end, but in the end, this showed that he can uh, be mean. It showed that he can be the boss. Yeah. I mean, he fucking came out of it. He was trying to stick by a certain rule, the rule, the code that everyone else is following, mm -hmm. not to kill. Yep. And mm -hmm. finally, he said, enough's enough. So Which way? Well, why wouldn't why the villains kill? Yeah, I don't understand that either. Well, you don't really know yet what Sky Fox did and why he did it. Yeah, maybe he still had a code to not kill. Because yeah. the only thing you know is yeah. that he kidnapped the vice president. Yes. You don't know if he killed anybody. You don't know what was going on. You don't know why he kidnapped the vice president. And he felt like he had to. He yeah. might have had a very so, good reason, yeah. Hutch, obviously, I mean, he still was living by that rule. Because they, they were even talking about it when they were back at their pad. The women that were there with him were saying, we even follow your stupid rule mm -hmm. or whatever. So, yeah, you know, they're not there to kill anybody. He was still following that, even though he was living a life of crime. Right. And now he's said, fuck it. Mm -hmm. These people were after him and putting the pressure on him and threatening yeah. his people he loved. So he, him, just like, uh, what's the son's name? Brandon. Brandon. I was way off. And he's Paragon. Samsonite. I was mm -hmm. way off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, um, he saw him do the same thing mm -hmm. when people he loved were threatened. So the new generation of heroes mm -hmm. are willing to take that step. Yeah. Whereas the older generation, at least most of them, mm -hmm. are still holding on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Hutch's superpower, it's not really a superpower that he has, but that little fucking wand... But he's a, evidently he's a pretty, tech, he's a tech guru. Yeah, it's pretty badass. He only dude. listens to him, so maybe yeah. he's super smart. What is he? Some kind of tech guru could be his IQ. Yeah, or something like that. But it's amazing that you could just say heart and it goes blows up the big guy's heart. I mean, that's pretty fucking. It has to know his intent somehow. He kept saying yeah. inside the van. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the van. How's the fucking thing know 
yeah. in one van. I mean, it, so it has to be connected yeah. to him. That looked like a major metropolitan area. You know, like end up with some other like fucking like a Brooklyn or Manhattan or something. Yeah, something, you don't know where he's going to end up. Exactly. So soccer mom's van. I mean, that yeah. was pretty cool. One thing I'll say is I was pretty compelled by the the um, the present day stuff as it was uh, the past stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we just basically see George looks like a caring, carefree guy. Loves his friends. His fortune's going away, but he was kind enough to give as much of a severance as he could to the staff. But first, I felt like he was a douchebag, though. I mean, when you see fucking 72 eggs lined up on a table, and yeah. like, that's kind of an arrogant douchebag thing, but that's what I was going to ask you guys. That's how they live, behind those <laughs> fucking gated yeah. walls. At the end, though, when he was kind of like sniffling, do you think it was, he was sniffling because he kind of regretted uh, his arrogance and how he's kind of lived his life, this super ultra-rich guy and had 72 eggs fucking prepared every morning? Yeah. Or do you think he was sad to see his riches go? Or a little bit of both. Uh, for me, it was mm. a little bit of both, but mm. mostly the former. And I was also kind of thinking about the staff he la- laid off and mm-hmm. his legacy that, is, that was left to him has now been the, from his parents. Yeah. The feeling I have right now, not based mostly on the information, but just how it was all presented was that just the change. The change of it. The change of it all. I mean, his friend is losing his mind, presumably. Mm-hmm. Um, his Everything he had, the life he had is going away. Yeah. Cuthbert and him, and it was kind of awkward that morning. Yeah, that so was it's just I think that change is finally hitting him. Yeah, that was pretty striking how it went from the seventy-two eggs, all the staff there kissing at his ass. That last you know couple scene there where he was empty room and it was just him and his yeah. butler. Yeah, that was pretty striking. So and um, yeah, so and he kind of dropped the ball by accident. You know, I think he's just trying to be a good friend and. Right. Now Shell's crazy again. Obviously, we know as the audience that he's not crazy. Okay, yeah. So, from their perspective, yeah, he probably feels like, fuck, he set it all on fire mm-hmm. again. But from our perspective, we know that he's put Sheldon back on the path. Yeah. So, yeah. And I so, think, it's ultimately a, a good thing, but yeah, and I think his, George family knows. Think, his family doesn't think so. No one knows that right now. Yeah. I think George has a feeling he's not fucking crazy because he said, well, maybe if, maybe the drawings aren't crazy you know, yeah he said, he said you know maybe it's something from your childhood so yeah. you remembered yeah trying right. to show him that it, it wasn't all just insane ramblings right yeah um, he had to be shitting his pants when he fucking caused sheldon to lose his shit again dude. i know it probably felt pretty small <laughs> yeah yeah and then the family was kind of pissed and you know so yeah yeah i, I'm, I was pleasantly surprised we focused on george i guess i just wonder how they're all going to come to follow sheldon to this island yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I imagine his wife leaves. I would assume she... that she's going to be gone out of the picture soon, mm-hmm. thinking he's fucking nuts. And yeah, but how they all go along? The dad said in the last episode to gather your crew or something. How's the journalist line. like? I don't know how she'd fit in. Yeah. Who's that? Like the, the journalist is going to be his wife. Kennedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We even see her this episode. We didn't see the son this episode. No. no. Um. Interesting choice there. I would like to have seen a little bit more development of the sun in this episode, but what I did like, I did like how they revealed that Hutch's stick. He doesn't have to hold it and those kind of things. The whole episode, that was cool. That was a nice the little whole, <clears throat> the whole thing. Yeah. The whole time you see him holding it and using it, or just to keep it with him, I guess. But then towards the end, it was a really cool, was it common misconception, etc. Mm-hmm. That was a really cool reveal. But I did think I already knew the whole time that Sky Fox was his dad so I thought the end was kind of unnecessary I think they should have left out the radio part in the beginning if they were going to make that reveal in the end right mm-hmm. it kind of took away from it okay when they uh, when the docs gave Shell a clean bill of health they said there was nothing physically wrong with him I'm glad that they didn't say anything about mentally because back then they would have thought that was hogwash <laughs> yeah they didn't really understand the brain but they did understand that people can lose their shit well yeah. back then they would have fucking they thought people a... got shell shocked and they didn't they, and and a lot, well, lots of times, so the British would execute people who got shell shot <laughs> because they didn't know any better. They thought, "Oh, he's a coward." Yeah, yeah. Well, but they really they had problems. Uh, yeah. yeah, like a lobotomy or some shit, right? Here, they well, they started them. doing that later on. Oh, later on <laughs> in the 1920s, they I don't know what what they would have thought. Right. Honestly, I mean, turning you in a hole and locked you like up, Abraham probably. Maslow, Sigmund Freud, uh, Beerus, Frederick Skinner, all those guys. They didn't come along until a little bit later. Hmm. Well, they didn't start being adopted until later, like in the right in the 60s, like. They, they, uh, you guys haven't seen Mad Men, but in the 60s, like some of the, these people who are really well off, they're not quite sure about psychology either. 
You know what I mean? So I'm glad they just said, "Oh, what's wrong?" <laughs> you know. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, hmm. I just love the jerk toy thing, and like you said, the, the thing at the end is shark infested waters. That was that was cool. Was pretty, that was Big pretty, man's heart. Pretty, yeah. yeah, pretty gruesome. Yeah. So. Chloe, uh, we saw her for a second. She was drunk off her ass, got sober real quick. But maybe this is the start of something new for her. Maybe she is going to get a taste for the superhero thing again and finally get her shit together, hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. But Yeah. Well, just like... I wonder what it was she took. What were they were trying to steal? It looked like a bag of drugs That's to me. That's what I thought, but it couldn't have been that important to the guy who was just drugs. Well, it was just the translation of the money, probably. You know what I mean? If you got that bag, you could sell it and make back... Whatever, well, it's a small time for this fucking guy that's was glowing that? red and beating people to death. What well, was like a billion dollars, dude? It was some of that Breaking Bad, Breaking Bad meth is what it was. <laughs> Probably, uh, you know, blue, high, right. va- high va- like value. Shit. Lives on. You see somebody commenting on her shit about cooking? Yeah, yeah, yeah please yeah, cook, and yeah. I commented on it and said Walter White style or Martha Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, someone else commented and said, "Well, I'm tempted to say Walter White." <laughs> I guess that's we got to show up in gas masks and our tidy whities Dude, that would be hilarious. <laughs> I can't. That would be ruined. If I show my white eyes, it'd be terrible. They're not white anymore. Is that what you're saying? If we ever do breaking, they're stained, skinned brown. Oh my god, dude! All those hours sitting there. Editing. Remember, my dad used to call me shit stained Shane. <laughs> <laughs> now he never called me that. But would that be funny though? He never called me that. Oh, shit. Um, oh that's funny. Yeah, I no, I thought this was pretty good, and I thought it was a nice diversion away from the family. I'm interested now in George. Why he turns? I'm interested in how they get their powers still. Yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah, and like you said, I'm wondering, um, what's your name, Maggie? What's Chloe. Name? Chloe. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if Chloe, what this means for her, or maybe it was just an isolated incident. But she said, I know you, and yeah, there's a super uppercut. Yeah, oh, that was awesome. Yeah. But oh. Honestly, what I thought originally was Chloe was drunk, and she was going to be like... You well, know, she said, I know you to Hutch, and then Hutch bailed. Right. right. Yeah. I, I thought maybe she was going to be like, I don't, you know, I don't care what you're fucking doing, just go on your way. But no, she engaged them, and... Well, they engaged her first. Well, they did engage her, but I'm saying... If she asked if they were all right, yeah. and the fucking guy froze her, and the yeah. other girl got out and started doing the sonic wave thing. Yeah. So she's like, all right, fuck it, and she's pissed. So she's right. just tearing them up. Right. Yeah, they didn't do anything. They may, they'd be okay. Yeah, they, they might, might have. And I agree with you. I think that if they wouldn't have fucked with her, she probably just would have went on her way as a drunkard, and it would have been the end <laughs> of it. A drunkard. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, well, there's a difference between being a drunk and being an alcoholic. An alcoholic pays his bills. A functioning alcoholic. <laughs> functioning, yeah. yes. Well, there's a difference. That's the difference my boss said. He says, there's a difference. You know what the difference is between an alcoholic and a drunk? An alcoholic, you know, works to pay for his habit. Yeah. Well, and drunk's out there, I guess, beggar in to, <laughs> to get that fuel is, The fuel is out yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Do you guys got any other notes? Look here. No, there was one scene in the beginning where he's telling Sheldon the story and Sheldon fell asleep. It yeah. It reminded me of the nice guys. Oh, because um, Ryan Gosling, he's he's a drunk. Or he's an alcoholic. I should yeah, say. pays his habit. Yeah, and um, he's wanting to know more about Russell Crowe's character because Russell Crowe doesn't really reveal much about himself or talk about himself. Yeah, and he's like, well, well, you're the guy in the diner. Tell me about that. And he lays on this diving board over this empty pool where he throws all his empty bottles, and he starts. Russell Crowe starts telling him this touching story about himself and his past. And he sort of looks around and fucking Ryan Gosling is passed out <laughs> on the board. I remember so, that. That's hilarious. I love that movie. It's a good movie. It's a good one. It's a really good one. I watched it with you, I think, the first time. Yeah, it's fucking great. Um, and just that scene in general was just funny, too. It, it was. was. Yeah. Yeah, his friend was trying to help him, and he's going to talk about some dark stuff with his parents, and yeah. then he's passed out by then. He passed out. We've had yeah. probably some of those conversations. Well, you're the one passing out, probably. Right? <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> um, I don't got too much else. It's a pretty good episode, and I'm liking this series so far. It's grown on me. So. Yeah, that's a good show. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you like us, like and subscribe. Find us on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter. And if you don't, it's like Ryan Goggins, you won't. <laughs> perfect. That was perfect. Or, or Walton Goggins. That <laughs> shit. Damn. Ryan Goggins. You fucked it up. Ryan Gosling. <sighs> Um...